on a month-to-month -month basis, down 0.3%. Now we're going to turn our attention to real estate investments this week on Fund Tractor, Tracker. Our guest is Corrado Russo. He's a portfolio manager at Timber Creek Asset Management, and he manages the Timber Creek Global Real Estate Fund. Thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning. Uh, everybody seems to be focused uh, on the commodity complex, in particular crude oil. Uh, and um, what I'm finding in a lot of assets uh, right now is people aren't just selling what they want to sell, they're selling what they can sell. So they've been selling crude, but if they can't get out of enough crude, they're selling other things. How has this kind of uncertainty in the market affected perceptions of real estate right now? Uh, certainly uh, the Canadian REIT market has had some impact from the Canadian oil prices and what that's done. I mean, I think the market is starting to separate those REITs that have, you know, Alberta exposure, Western Canada exposure that will be more impacted versus those that won't. But you have seen selling across the board, the Canadian REIT market certainly hasn't, uh, you know, uh, escaped what's happened. But uh, I think our view is that that's why you want to be in a global portfolio. That's you know, if you look at the fund that we manage, you know, you've got Canada as a part of a you know global portfolio's exposure to the U.S. and Europe, which are actually benefiting from what's happening in in oil prices. So you know, I think just another example why you want to continue to be global. And frankly, I think now is the time to really search and look at all right if. Every Everything's selling off. Are there opportunities out there that you know maybe the sell-off isn't warranted, and is it is it a buying opportunity for the long term? It seems to me that crude is just one other issue to worry about for the real estate sector. I mean, it's the interest rate front, it's the valuation front, uh, and people have been worried at one point this year that they may have gotten ahead of themselves value-wise. How do those two things, interest rates and valuation, sit right now? Yeah, I think I think it's a very important point, right? If if you're paying up for real estate and interest rates are about to go up and there's a supply coming online, you want to be careful or cautious in terms of investing in real estate. The irony is what's happened with you know crude oil prices is A, valuations have come back in line, so it's given us an opportunity to buy at cheaper prices with healthy yields. But the other thing that oil prices do, um, which is kind of ironic, is if you look at supply, well, if oil prices are coming off, the Canadian economy might be lower, people are going to think twice about going ahead with those projects. So, you know, supply could taper off, which could help long-term real estate. And if, uh, you know, the economy starts to settle down, well, that's going to reduce the likelihood of interest rates, you know, going up, um, especially in Canada. So, you know, interest rates don't go up, supply stays in check, valuations are attractive. You know, it's, it seems like a, an opportune time to start to look at the sector. Uh, one of the names that, um, oh, I just want to break in. I'm just seeing here that... Um one of the drug companies, uh, Shire, looking to buy NPS Pharmaceuticals. That sort of distracted me for a second. Just back to some of the names you uh, like. Dream Global, which has had a bit of a, a round trip this year. What's going on there? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's a perfect example of, uh, you know, a stock that's sort of been thrown out, uh, you know, maybe with the bathwater there. Um, you know, you've had Canadian REITs across the board that have sell off. Uh, some of it's warranted, especially for those that have exposure to Alberta. But here you have a stock where it's listed in the Canadian market and the investor base is Canadian, but all of their assets are overseas in Europe. And frankly, in Germany, which is a very strong real estate market, fundamentals are very attractive there. Cap rates are very solid. And you've got this discrepancy between you know, attractive private pricing, but investor sentiment Canada that's taken the price lower. And, you know, they've had some leasing issues in the past with the portfolio that they bought, but they've done a tremendous job at reducing that exposure, selling off the, the non-core assets and buying other assets that are increasing the quality of the overall portfolio. But because of what's happening in the Canadian market, you're not getting credit for that. Is there any confusion about all the dreams? There's Dream Industrial, Dream Global, Dream Unlimited, Dream Office. I, I think there absolutely is. And if you look at you know companies like Dream Office and Dream Industrial, they are getting impacted or could get impacted by what's happening in oil prices, given their exposure to you know Calgary office and industrial in Alberta. You know you could see if oil prices stay where they are longer term, that's going to impact vacancy potentially, could impact rental prices. But remember, they have long-term leases, and I think all of the sort of dream companies have been 
been sort of wrapped up in the one bucket, and that's why it's taken it down. And our view is with Dream Global, it's really unwarranted, and you're getting a nine and a half percent dividend yield. You know, where overseas in Germany yields are closer to the four to five percent range. Uh, another name uh, that's bounced uh, is Invest. It has hotels across the country. Yeah, I think it's a perfect example of you know looking at what's happening in oil and saying, well, how do I make money out of this chaos that's happening? And here's a company that actually could benefit from what's happening right now. And because oil prices have come down, and coupled with the fact that the U.S. market has had very strong GDP, that means the U.S. dollar as we We've shown has been rising relative to the Canadian dollar. Invest, a large part of their um, you know, travelers that come to their hotel companies across Canada are transient leisure um, travelers from the U.S. or convention business from the U.S. And if you've got you know, stronger GDP, people are going to be traveling more, and you've got a stronger U.S. dollar, that means it's cheaper to come to Canada for your travel and for your convention needs. And I think that you're going to see an uptick in their demand, and that obviously is positive for the uh, Revpar and as well as future cash flows. So uh, last time you were on, I believe about six months ago, mm -hmm. Northwest Healthcare Property REITs was one uh, that you talked about at that time, uh, also Cache logistics. Northwest, though, has not done uh, particularly well. Here's the performance of the two. What happened to Northwest, and uh, are you stepping up? Yeah, I think last time we talked about it, Northwest uh, is a company that had a very high attractive dividend yield that was very, uh, you know, was very stable, very uh, safe relative to the cash flow stream, effectively, you know, leased to government, and it continues to be the case. Their cash flow stream has been very solid. They've been hurt, you know, recently with all of the sort of Canadian mayhem if you looked at that chart that you had on earlier, it was really all been in the last couple of months. And, you know, I think it's, again, investor sentiment. It's out of favor. And, you know, I think it's time to double down and, and, and look at that opportunity. Again, another example of getting uh, over 9% dividend yield in, you know, a cash flow stream that's effectively leased to the government. Um, you know, through the health care leases. So, yeah, our view would be it's, it's time to, to look at that again. Corrado, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Corrado Russo is manager of the Timber Creek Global Real Estate Fund. Just ahead, we're going to tell you what's been upgraded and downgraded, and I'll give you a little more data on what we're hearing about.